Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Barry Colfer, and I'm the Director of Research here at the Institute of International and European Affairs in Dublin. A very warm welcome to everybody, both here in person and online. As the conversation on the future of industrial policy in the European Union continues, questions on the future of European competitiveness, the green transition, and trade policy have only grown in importance. Indeed, competitiveness today feels like strategic autonomy of two years ago, and that most conversations pertaining to the future of the EU uh, makes reference to, to competitiveness and the EU's capacity to be competitive. In keeping with that, I'm really pleased to welcome you to this discussion on the French vision for the European business agenda. We're delighted to be joined by Madame Garance Pinot, who is the Director General of the Mouvement des Entreprises de France, MEDEF, the largest business organization in France. Before joining MEDEF, Garan served as European advisor to the French president, Emmanuel Macron. She was previously chief of staff to the European Affairs Minister and managed the 2019 European elections for the president's political party, La République en Marche, as it was then. She also worked as the deputy director of social relations at MEDEF and as a diplomatic advisor to the office of the Minister for Labour. In addition to this, Garan has worked for the UN and the OSCE in the field of human and asylum rights. Before handing over to uh, our speaker for uh, 20 minutes um, or less, if you wish, uh, remarks, just a couple of housekeeping. Uh, following our presentation, there will be a questions and answers, as is convention. Those here in the room in Dublin, please raise your hands. Those online, please use the Q&A function on Zoom to register your questions. Um, all of the discussion today is on the record. And my final thing to do is just to most sincerely thank Madame Céline Plas, our relatively new ambassador from France here in Dublin, a very sincere welcome to the Institute. And just to say, we're always thrilled uh, with our kind of regular and excellent interaction with the French embassy here. So just a big thanks to your team as ever for the seamless organization of this and every other engagement we tend to have. So that's it from me until the Q&A. Madame Pinot, over to you. Thank you, Barry works yeah thank you very much for the invitation i also want to thank the ambassador and the embassy for the opportunity i'm very pleased uh, to have this uh, conversation with you and to have yeah the opportunity to present some thoughts about the um the future of the eu uh, for a french business organization so you've presented my cv so i'm not uh, going to repeat that, maybe just to tell you that MEDEF is, as you said, the main French business organization. We represent 200,000 companies in France, um, in all sectors, from industry to services, uh, from all sizes, so the biggest companies, as well as SMEs, and um, uh, throughout the territory of France, because we have 120 local representations in France. So that makes us very well, I think, connected to the reality of the fields in terms of uh, economic um, situation. Um, we also, of course, have a branch or a uh, office in Brussels, and we are in a process of uh, strengthening actually uh, our resources in Brussels, because um, we think that I mean not which we think we see that the most regulation uh, impacting companies today in the EU is just built in Brussels and uh, Strasbourg. So we need to be, of course, there. We need to be much more vocal. So that's for de the defensive side, but we also need to be very present on the offensive side and make proposals and suggestions and work very closely with the EU institution uh, for uh, uh, what interested business, of course, competition, competitiveness, energy prices, simplification, and, and all these uh, issues. Um, so you suggest to have a conversation or uh, about uh, the EU and uh, uh, how we see things at our level. I think that there are at least two reasons why uh, business representatives 
at least us, because we're not the only ones, of course, in France and either in, in the EU. I just forgot to mention that uh, we are the first contributor to Business Europe, which is the organization that gathers around 40 uh, business federations in the, uh, in the EU. So we are very much uh, present there and influential, hopefully. Um, two reasons, I was saying, uh, that business representatives raise uh, their voice in the current context. The first one is that I think that competitiveness issues uh, have never been as high uh, on the agenda, on the EU agenda. And of course, this is very sunk to the uh, Draghi report or the reports by Mr. Draghi, by Mr. Letta. But this is also the result of uh, direct influence work also made uh, so by the uh, civil society at large and including business uh, federations and business organization uh, of different uh, natures. Um, basically, things that are now stated in the Draghi reports, uh, business representatives have been saying this for months or for years, uh, so we are very, uh, it, it, we think that it's very good that there's a global awareness uh, at the EU level uh, that competitiveness should be our focus for the coming years. But now, of course, this is just a report, or this is contributions. Now we need action, we need concrete action, and we are ready to work with the EU institutions because we think that we don't really have time and we need to address these very concrete issues within the two or three years, uh, at least at the beginning of the new mandate of this um, new commission. The second reason is that I think there's a question uh, at least we are wondering if there is a shift in the EU on uh, the leadership who, who is uh, in a capacity to drive uh, urgent reforms and these action plans. Um, member states are in different situations due to political national context, due to economic uh, situation. Uh, and I, I think that at the beginning of this new um, a mandate, uh, the president of the commission has a great power, maybe more than during the first uh, first cycle, the first five years. Um, and to be honest, I'm not sure in what state of, of mind she is, and we'll see that probably at the end of this year, once the hearings are done, and once she's in a capacity to start to deliver. But of course, what the message we want to send to the commission um, uh, and the commissioners are that business is ready uh, and uh, to, to, to contribute very concretely to uh, the action plan, uh, and that since she's got uh, power, she's got probably she's the driving force to implement what she says should be implemented, meaning um, starting by the, the Draghi report. So we are in a situation where basically we know, thanks to Draghi again the what, now we need to invent the how, and we probably need to collectively give us a timeline to implement uh, this uh, how. I just would like to take an example with the field of innovation, because I think that's part of, um, that's one good example of the fields in which Europeans, and maybe France in particular, uh, are quite good, so we are skilled, we are good in research, uh, we have some good and interesting companies, this is the case for example in AI, and this is the case throughout Europe. But we should not miss, um, again, the um, opportunity to uh, weigh in the global game, and if we do not, I think, act with uh, uh, being very resolute now, um, I think that the risk uh, for us to not be again in the global game. And this is linked to the cost of risk in the EU. In innovation or in disruptive innovation in particular, um, there are more failures than successes, of course. But if out of the 10 projects that you've launched, you've got one success, this can be enough, of course, if the gains out of this project compensates or covers the losses of the, all the others. The problem at the EU level so far, what we see, is that the costs are higher than the potential gains 
because mainly of a very complex and numerous uh, reg regulation. So how, so we know the what, how can we change that? Of course, this is a very complex uh, topic. And again, I think it is very illustrative of the uh, EU challenges we are facing. But three examples. In terms of financing, we see uh, the gap. I mean, again, all this is very well documented in the, uh, in the Draghi report and other contributions. But we see the gap in investment in particular. And the risk is that uh, EU saving and EU money goes uh, more and more to, to be invested in the US economy. I think that's in, in the letter reports, uh, the figure is 300 billion a year of EU savings going to be invested in the US economy. And this is going to be worse if you can, again, we do not act um, now. So part of the uh, answer there, I know it's not simple, is probably in the implementation uh, and the quick implementation of the uh, capital market union. I think now we uh, more say uh, saving an investment union uh, or something that is the later expression. So probably it's not simple. Of course, we've been dealing with that or trying to deal with that for the last uh, 10 or 12 last years. So I'm not saying we should just take the package and uh, adopt it. This is not possible. But starting with uh, some part of it, uh, for example, the prudential rules and standards or securitization would help and kick off uh, this uh, uh, conversation at the EU level on the financing of innovation. The second uh, point is about governance. Probably uh, the right model there is the US DARPA, which means that we should be at the EU level much more selective in the projects we want to invest in and not try to uh, have an exhaustive industrial um, uh, policy. We see that, uh, first of all, so far we don't have enough money and it doesn't uh, um, uh, give enough uh, concrete results in terms of uh, innovation. So uh, the DARPA is a model that we at our level look with uh, um, a lot of uh, attention. The third point is in terms of regulation. I was mentioning it, I think we need, and this is of course much wider than in the innovation field, we need a drastic simplification and probably that should be the priority of the second mandate of Mrs. von der Leyen. She said, I think she announced that she would give an objective by each commissioner to uh, cut regulation uh, in um, each of their, uh, um, uh, of their fields, just one figure between uh, 2019 and 20, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I think it's yeah, 2024, uh, there, there has been uh, 750 new pieces of legislation in the US. And versus in the EU, the, the, the number is 2,600. So we see again, and the question is not um, to say that regulation is bad as itself. Of course, we need to, uh, to uh, have an assessment on the, the quality and the opportunity of regulation. But basically, you can see that we uh, over-regulate in the EU. Uh, probably we under-invest uh, while in the US, they may be uh, under-regulate, uh, but they over-invest. And the, re the reality and the results are there. They have massive investment in uh, disruptive, innovative uh, technology companies in the US, while we are, uh, there's a real risk that to, to lag behind in the EU. Um, so again, I think that uh, thanks to many recent contributions led by Mr. Draghi, we know exactly what to do. So again, uh, we're not saying that we should implement everything uh, at the same time now in the coming months, but at least uh, kick off and give us, meaning the, uh, um, the representative of business, uh, the uh, conviction that, uh, or the, sorry, the feeling that uh, she's ready and they are ready collectively to act in that direction um, would be very uh, appreciated because the feeling sometimes it's that, um, if we do not act, we will will be uh, just uh, kicked out of the global um, the global game. Just one last word about uh, the situation in our country, um, and I'm just uh, leaving uh, behind the uh, 
the political situation, which is just a, a, a bit messy at the moment. But structurally, if we want to have a strategic conversation uh, at the EU level with all the others, with Brussels, with Berlin and with the others, I think that we should, and we are trying to help doing this, uh, clear messages on our capacity uh, to present a credible financial situation. And this is uh, probably uh, the first condition, again, to have a new, uh, uh, again, strategic uh, conversation with, with the Europeans and our partners. Otherwise, uh, there's a risk probably not to be um, listened to. Saying that, I think we should remain very positive and optimistic because the EU, as we know, has many assets and we have a, a very strong uh, single market. And again, I think what is very important is the, um, the ideas and contributions. Again, what is very good is that we know exactly the what. So now we need to determine a pace of action and a very clear action plan. Uh, there's a voice for business to do that, uh, and we are very ready to, uh, to contribute. I thank you for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.